Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You are here with me again. This is your host Faz um, Tomlinson on Radio Ramadan 87.7. Um, we're basing the topic on um, mental health. This is part two. We did have a successful part one um, last week. We are going to be doing this again now. Um, it was such a, a wide and you know such a big big subject um an hour doesn't seem to be enough to be fair but anyway we appreciate your comments please keep them coming in um let's start this topic all over again um if you want to participate please do call us on the studio hotline number which is o double one four two four two five two zero zero if you don't want to talk and you're a text type of person or you want to whatsapp us please do call the number on o seven eight six seven eight six five nine Five six. I'm just going to repeat that again. Oh seven eight six seven eight six five nine five six. Again, you're listening to Radio Ramadan eighty seven point seven. Right. Okay. Part two. So, coming back to mental health um, and faith, we did touch on subjects like charity, anxiety. We did have um, the guest on uh, on the show as well, which was Ash Ali from um, Ash Vlogs as well um who's got his own youtube channel also talking about his um personal issues in his life talking about his depression which we were so proud of and i'm happy to introduce that we've actually got ash ali here again with us this evening welcome again assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you very much again fast for having me and it's absolute pleasure thank you ash for joining us again um so I should just want to say, you know, last time we did have some text messages that had come through. Um, certain ones were, were quite important as well. Uh, we had a lot of people saying it's, it's the, you know, mental health and the anxiety and the depression side of things is affecting a lot of men within our culture, okay, within our society. Um, not as much women, but he said he touched on a, a very important topic there. He said that there were a lot of suicidal deaths within our community as well. Um, 73% you know, of men are suffering from anxiety and depression. How can we make this easy for our brothers out there? Uh, thank you very much again for asking this question. It's a very nice question. And yeah, I totally agree with you because there's a lot of people and they are committing suicide. And I don't know why people don't go and speak to people because there are people out there that are going to help you. You can do something about it because you are not alone. Guys, you are not alone. You can do it. You can fight it. You can battle it. It's a disease, yes, but don't just think, what am I going to do? Don't feel hopeless. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Do something about it. If you have problems with money, there's ways around it. If you have problems with relationships, there's ways around it. If you have lost your family members or friends, there's ways around it. There is so many different aspects of depression that people suffer from so you're not alone and please 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 i urge you speak to people about it don't think right if i do speak about it people might think he's very emotional or why is he speaking about his personal problems don't think like that because everyone goes through it you're actually a very strong person about coming out and speaking to people about it 100 percent, i totally agree with you ash another thing that i want to touch on as well um due to my personal experiences and, and whatever have you as well people's behavior around somebody who is depressed somebody who is suffering somebody who has got anxiety clearly the signs are there um how do you think one's behavior should be say for example you've got depression as a friend the, it's important to have emotional support right but we need to be careful of how we're actually um helping that person guiding that person okay now oppression to op oppress somebody and use islam and say you know oh no it's just a journey in life and islam it should be accepted it's okay you know it, it's whatever allah decides is allah's will do you think that's the correct way to actually deal with somebody who's just had some a loss i think personally it's about loving it's about caring it's about showing that moral support to people and I know Faz you've had a problem you've had an issue and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant my dear friend Dawood the highest Jannatul Ferdos I mean, I mean what a person he was oh my god when he used to walk into the room that nice warm smile and that hug 
and I was personally so upset when I heard about it. Can we please speak a little bit about your trauma, how you went through and how you're finding it? Because I believe it's now, um, he passed away, if I'm correct, December the 25th, if I'm correct, because I still remember the phone call we had. Can you please enlighten us? Wow. <laughs> First of all, I just want to say I didn't really want to make this about myself personally. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's very difficult, very hard, especially um, he was my husband, you know, he was my soulmate, my friend, my best friend. And sadly, yeah, um, he came to our deen, he came to Islam and everything. And um, he sadly, um, Allah's will, obviously, you know, he passed away on the 25th um, of December, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him the highest places of Jannah, I mean, uh, and make him amongst those who are pious, um, inshallah. Um, it was very difficult. It was a state of shock. Um, I don't really want to touch on, on that subject. Not that I'm kind of like, um, don't want to discuss it. I just don't want to get emotional. That's all it is. And it, again, I'm, I'm also scared. You know, I might be presenting, I'm doing this big topic about mental health and how faith has helped me get through certain things. But at the end of the day, I'm still a human being. Um, and remember in part one, I said the Prophet Nabi Sallam knew how his grandchildren were also going to get martyred in the in the battle in Karbala. Um, you know, he was getting depressed and upset before the event even took place. So it's OK for me to cry. I've just lost the big thing that happened to me in my life. You know, he was the love of my life um it was very difficult me and my husband we shared everything together um we ate together slept together went to the gyms together walked together prayed together woke up for ramadan and this is an emotional time for me because when i wake up in the morning it's just there were three and now there's only two so it, it, it's very very difficult i think initially at the, at the beginning i mean it's quite touching um my husband um allegedly you know um though he 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 passed away in my arms early hours in the morning on the 25th of december um but subhanallah you know he was comforted um his name was daoud so he got treated like a king and the name daoud comes from king david in in the bible and he loved his name daoud when he got reverted to when he came to islam um four years ago and subhanallah what a person you know he changed his life around he embraced islam he fitted in he did everything that he possibly could do um, he had a good heart he was a very caring person and you know how i um i wasn't even in shock ash it was so bizarre like you know i read the shahada Kalma to him and he also read it before he passed away it was just a long sigh um and i accepted his death but of course I was upset, you know, um, I think people at the time, I think it was my adrenaline. I had to give my husband um, CPR for half an hour, but I know he, I knew he'd passed away at that, po at that point because he took his last breath in my arms, subhanAllah. Um, and then obviously you've got to follow protocol. You know, you've got to call the ambulance. You've got to have the police coming around because the death was at home. Um, there's a lot of things that was going on at the same time they obviously tried to resuscitate him as well when the ambulance people came after half an hour and everything like that but i was doing it for half an hour my son was a witness there as well so he's only 19. um so he had to witness everything so it couldn't have been nice for him on his mental state you know um my son hassan he's been on the radio as well before but he was only what seven at the time he's now mashallah 19. but you know something i have been fortunate you know it was a blessed marriage it was a happy marriage and these things can happen death doesn't have an age but we can get through it with the right kind of support with the right kind of family support with the right kind of people around you you don't need people who are going to oppress you if you, you don't want people to say oh you'll get over it you'll be fine he's a he's on his journey and you can you'll be fine on yours it, that's not the right kind of comforting mechanism that somebody wants at that moment in time okay you want to hear 
like we're there for you you know it's okay don't worry about it you know if you need anything are you okay would you like to have a coffee would you like to discuss it would you want do you want to talk about it now me as a woman i'm a bit of a dominating character if you like you know certain i won't open up to everybody ash um, only certain people i can open up to and say you know but you have your good days and you have your bad days um bad days more than good days as time goes on and still to me that's raw but i'm not here to speak about my situation if i can touch hearts of people who have gone through similar aspects and how i look at things is there's so many people it's like a, a brother told me um a few days ago um he was from pakistan and he, he was talking to me from pakistan actually he's on a holiday he says god you know faz there's a brother that you know a friend of mine he's lost his wife he's lost his daughter and now he's lost his brother that's three people in one year i've lost one you know so when i look at situations around the world when i look at innocent people dying some people have been martyred some people are fighting for the country have died look at palestine look at afghanistan look at yemen you know kids are suffering that kind of thing and it makes me feel better thinking well do you know what it's allah's will and i will get through this i have to get through this if i don't get through this now i'm never going to get through this so for me being more practicing turning to allah more helps me I found it easier when I'm not speak sometimes I like my closed space I like space where I can cry behind my closed doors and it's still okay but then I have moments where I want to cry in front of my friends it's okay and I, we're not alone you're not alone because grief touches us all today I'm sat here I may not be here tomorrow you know because I never thought that was going to happen to my husband, but it did, you know, something. So, yeah, inshallah, Allah, Allah gives you that sabr. The more you turn to your deen of faith, something, I don't care what it is, you know, grab hold of something that keeps you strong. Surround yourself with positive people. You don't need negative people around you. Or, you know, there's been certain things that have been said to me, um, you're a widow now. That's another thing that I'd like to touch on. Can please someone explain how a widow should be? You know, I've had people whispering in my ear saying, oh, you've, oh my God, your husband's died. So you've got such bad luck. This is a problem in society. This is a uneducated people saying to me that we feel bad, you've got such bad luck because your husband's died. Astaghfirullah, that's not the comforting words that I want to hear at the point my husband's passed away. You know, I'm sat here grieving. I'm praying for my husband. Faith is keeping me strong. And practicing people are saying these things in, in, to me. But then why are we saying inna lillahi wa inna alayhi rajiun if it's bad luck? Astaghfirullah. It's Allah's will. So all you can do is smile and say Alhamdulillah. Because my husband, he came to Islam. He chose our deen. He didn't go to any other religion. He turned to our deen. He accepted and embraced Islam. He read the Shahada. He passed away on a fr on a Friday. He, he he took he embraced Islam on a Friday. He took Shahada on a Friday. He took spiritual connection on a Friday. We got married on a Friday, and his janazah happened on a Friday. What is the bad luck in that? So when you change your mindset and when you change the aspects and when you look at it more in a religious perspective. I have got nothing more to say apart from Alhamdulillah. That is it for me. And all I pray, Ash, just very, very briefly, is that at the time, you know, I struggled because it was that time of year. You know, it were the 25th of December. It was bank holiday. Um, I was really, really struggling. I was getting phone calls. People were saying, when, are you, when, is, when is the body getting released, etc., etc. just briefly touch on this point. And I was struggling, as in, trying to organize you know everything and death certificate all this sort of thing uh, get coroner's reports you know there's so much aspect at the time and you know you, you don't get chance um to um deal with what's actually just happened first of all Neil uh, Faz I'm very proud of you for two reasons first of all you're an independent person you're a strong person you've always been independent working person and you've done everything on your 
be half the best as your ability you can and i'm very proud of you second thing i like you. to say is when i saw you caring for dawood i saw you at the hospital when you were taking him to the hospital yeah. there and back and you were doing so much things out of your way even now you're not working and you had the courage you put everything to a side and you thought right he's my husband and i'm going to do whatever i can do to comfort him at this hardest moment and these days we have a lot of people that are very selfish they wouldn't do that so bravo to you hats off to you and that you went out of the way and you did your level best everything possible under the sun for your husband Dawood and that's what I'm very proud of thank you Arish that means a lot to me thank you so much yeah it was hard it was a hard two year um married for four two of them years you know may Allah be pleased with him you know he, he he got diagnosed with chronic kidney failure so but subhanallah he was a strong man he was fit as you know you've seen him physically he was beautiful he was fit as a fiddle boxing promoter boxing fitness instructor gyms you know he because he also believed that his body you know was a gift from allah you need to look after your body you need to look after your health it's it's, it's absolutely fundamental um to do so and we he were just physically active for somebody like that to actually be diagnosed with chronic kidney failure and believe it or not for the whole 11 percent um the whole year without any medication without any um you know any kind of medication or any dialysis for the whole year he was on 11 percent of his kidneys for, for the whole year without anything still working hard i put him under my wing we got working together so not only did we do everything else as a husband and wife would do on a daily basis we actually went to work together as well you know so subhanallah it's a it's a massive loss in my life and allah knows this but allah's allah doesn't care you know what situation i am in this is something that is deeper in in islam that you, people need to wake up and realize Allah doesn't care. Allah is, is merciful. Allah is loving. Allah is caring. Allah is the all, you know, knowing all wise and the comforter and the best of comforts. But you're not going to get more comforted in knowing that Allah's taken his, whatever he created for this world, he's taken whatever was rightly Allah's. He didn't belong to me. Do, do you know what I'm saying? I do. So it, it is, it, it is, um, it is quite deep. Um, but the thing is, it's it, it's hard to cope with. But when you kind of get your um, get to realize, is um, Allah's taken whatever He you know put in place for me. He's taken it back. Now, this is something that's it, you know it, it, it can be difficult for people to digest the aspect of it. So as we believe, when your time is up, your time is up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written that for you. So Dawood, my friend Dawood, it was his time. And it's his time to go. But I'm really sorry about your loss. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him the Hajj and the Firdaus, Jannat, and all the brothers and sisters. But I'm really sorry for your loss. And I hope you feel better and you recover. And I would like to speak a little bit more about how you coped this time. If you would please speak, tell me a little bit about it, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, how I cope, I mean, every individual person is completely different, right? We agree. I'm a woman, an independent woman, um, practicing, you know, I became a lot more practicing. Um, I just turned to Allah and all I kept praying, I remember, um, sat there and a friend of mine was sat with me. She was praying. I'm there trying to ring the hospitals, um, trying to get my husband's body released because I wasn't able to, now for the whole four years we've been inseparable so for the three days that my husband had um passed away they'd taken the body to the mortuary and I couldn't go and see him so that itself was was hard for me to deal with and I remember sitting there from eight o'clock in the morning trying to make as many phone calls as I possibly could to the hospital to the dialysis unit the kidney unit specialist in Sheffield Northern General, getting hold of his GP, sending emails. I was in a frantic. I was just trying out getting phone calls from my family members. You know, what's happening? When's the body get When's the janaza? What's happening? People were flying in from Cyprus because he took his shahada in Cyprus. Um, and, you know, because we followed Sufism and, and everything like that. 
So people from there had flown into England as well, wanting to know when his funeral was going to be. A couple of people had, um, had rang it, etc. So can you imagine the immense, not only have I just gone through the loss of my husband, I'm also organising the funeral, trying to do everything in my power to get my husband's body released to me. So I, because I had an Islamic, you know, um, an obligation to hurry up and, you know, rest his, so rest his body, okay? So I remember doing everything I possibly could. I remember sat there in despair, ringing around to the point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my plans are better than yours. You know, he's, I was, I felt like my soul was in my throat. My friend were looking, thinking, oh my God, she's going to have a heart attack. All I remember is her being on her phone saying, mom, something's not right with Faz. Something's happened to Faz. Because I lost every part of a life in my body at that moment in time. The bizarre thing about it is, Ash, that when I um, lost my husband, I didn't go through that same emotion, okay? It was a complete different emotion. But we're going to wrap things up very, very quickly here. Please continue listening to, if you want to hear my side of the story and what I've been going through, um, please keep st keep tuned um, to my program. It's Mental Health and Faith on um, Radio Ramadan Sheffield 87.7. Keep tuned and we're going to slightly go to a break very, very quickly, wrap things up and then we will see you short. We'll speak to you shortly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. You are listening to Radio Ramadan Sheffield. Um, I'm your host, Faz uh, Tomlinson, discussing the topic uh, mental health and faith. Um, welcome back and I'm glad you guys are still tuned in. Um, we're going to go into um, the topic and earlier on, Ash, you did mention about how I coped. Um, yeah, hundred percent. But we're talking about you because the reason I asked you because you also have an interesting story, and you went through a grieving process, and for you it was more difficult because you spent time with a person for only three to four years, and then he was such a handsome, strong individual, so fit, and when you take life for granted you think i'm fit i'm strong so nothing's gonna happen to me and then something like that happens just turns your world upside down and i just want to know how you're coping now and what have you done to make you feel better because i know you are upset and i could see even when i used to speak to you on the phone so what have you done to overcome it and what kind of advice do you have for other people to overcome when they have problems like that? Because it's not you that just lost people. Everyone loses people. What advice do you have to people to kind of cope? Coping mechanisms. Oh, it's hard. Allah had to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to strip me. I'm a strong, independent kind of person. I like certain things in certain ways, as you are fully aware, if you know me. So... Like I said to you, you know, at, before we got into a break, um, just very quickly, um, I was trying to get organised. I was ticking boxes, done this, do, check this. Have I done the grave? Have I done this? Have I done this? Check, 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 check. Flowers arrangements and everything like that. That's how I was coping with the... I wasn't reflecting on what had just happened. I My adrenaline took over. Do you know what I mean? So I didn't just sat there and thought oh my god i can't move now my husband's just died in my arms no i was thinking oh my god i've got this to do and that to do and this to do and family members to call and i've got to organize this 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 so like i said to you you know that's the mode that was in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to give me a, a a wake up call he was like sweetheart you can try all you like i'm gonna show you now who's in charge right so I'm there thinking I've got everything all planned and everything's organised and I will get my husband's body out on Monday. Well, that wasn't the case. So when I did everything, all the thoughts, I used all the brain knowledge, all the wisdom that I knew, whatever brain capacity that I had that I need to call such such a person, doctors, GPs and everything. I did everything as a human being possible, okay, to get my husband's body released. But it got to a point where I lost hope. And you know when I lost that hope... I felt like every single part of me was just ripped apart. I couldn't physically move, Ash. I couldn't talk. I felt like my soul was just stuck in my throat. 
And you know something? The only thing that I uttered out of my mouth, and my friend was sat there, she thought I was going to have a heart attack. She's like, oh my God, she's going to pass out. She's going to have an heart attack. She's on the phone to her mum. And I was sat there and all of a sudden I just looked up. I don't know. I just looked up and I just said, Ya Allah, I've accepted his death. And I fully submitted to you. That part, um, that feeling was completely different to the feeling that I had lost my husband. Now, I can cry over that moment, but I can't cry over my husband's death. It's quite bizarre. Where some people have got a loss, they can cry over the moment and they've lost somebody. Where mine's been the complete opposite. So what I'm trying to explain here is not everybody is experiences all the same. Your experience when you lost your mum, you know, it was a complete different experience to how I lost my, my husband. One, because it's two different minds, a spouse and yours was a parent. Now, I'm not going to say my grief is bigger than yours because all griefs are not equal and all griefs are not, not the same, right? So how I cope with it was one of your questions. I don't cope well with it. I'm going to be honest with you. I have my ups and down moments. I have good days and I have my bad days. And it, I do cry. People think I don't cry. I do cry. Um, but behind closed doors, I'm not a, um, a person, you know, it's easy to sit here and say, oh, yeah, go to these people and go to these people or go to your local imam and go and speak to them, go to the local sister and go and speak to them. Sometimes I might not want to. So it's how one deals with grief, anxiety, depression themselves. Depression and anxiety are different to, to grief, okay? Grief can lead to depression. It can lead to anxiety. It's, it's, they're completely different, okay? This is what we need to focus on and deal with. How do we cope, right? I just completely turned my way because I do believe when people come from good faith, you do believe that this life is a test, right? Allah tests those who he loves the most. Allah, we are not going to go through life saying, oh yeah, we're good Muslims, or we're Muslims, without Allah saying, well, tell you something now, I'm going to test you, I'm going to test your faith, and I'm going to test you to the point, and strip everything away from you, and, 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 and I'm going to chuck you in this little corner, and I'm going to, you know, take your, your wealth away from you, your children away from you, your husband away from you, your mother away from you, your father away from you, are you still going to turn to me? So let me see how strong your faith is. Right? So Allah's challenging you as a person. If you've got good strength and um, faith and you're a believer, you're not going to forget me. And then when you don't forget me, I'm going to comfort your heart. And this is something else. And in my prayers, I always pray for my husband. I always say, Ya Allah, do not let me feel that pain I felt in my heart. I physically witnessed my husband passing away so peacefully in my arms it was such a beautiful moment but what i'm saying is that is how i coped with it now not everybody else is the same so it, it, it it's each individual but now i try and keep my mind distracted i'm focusing on thee i want to do things for thee i want to go out and do presenting i mean last year with yourself right we um, we did quite a few charity events, didn't we? Um, yes, we we've did. Done a lot um, presenting together. First, I want to say is may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give you sabr. Amen. And you are a very, uh, you are an individual that's very hardworking, and you are a very strong person. So may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give you sabr, Thank and you. hopefully you will feel better. In time. Mo moving on to charity, yes, we went to a lot of events. You was there, I was presenting. there. Um, Dawood was there as well, we did presenting and he used to participate in a lot of events and you used to participate in a lot of events and this is something that you're passionate about, something that you love and I'm very proud of you because you keep on pursuing it and you keep on doing it. You could have just sat home and said, Ash, I'm giving up, I'm not going to do anything, I'm going to just sit home, but you're doing things and that's what keeping you moving. I'm very proud of you that you're very active. Thank you so much, yeah, absolutely correct. Not that I want to do it, I feel like I need to do it. There's a difference, okay? I can easily, like you just said, sit at home and think, oh, that's it, I'm going to dwell on it now, my husband's died, oh my God, end of the world, right? 
but I do have weak moments where I think, no, I'm not doing anything today. Or sometimes, I mean, I had a moment today. I don't look back in my camera roll on me on my phone. Just like when you dragged me to London. Ah, can we speak about that? Because that was can. a last minute thing. And you had the willpower. And then yeah. I said, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Last minute thing went to it London. It was, it was, it was. Um, yeah, just touching on that point as well. I mean, what, I'm, what we're trying to say is to keep them... I'm consistent consistency i love consistency um we can say a lot of things and putting them in action can be difficult right sometimes depression doesn't allow you to do certain things you want to i've had that experience a couple of weeks ago where i'm thinking right i need to do this 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 and including including yourself um where i've said right you know we're going to do this we're going to do this for the future we're going to do this in a couple of weeks time when that time's come ash I physically wanted to do it and I, something was not letting me do it, you know? You have to fight that. Once you've fought that initial aspect of that feeling, that is where you've conquered it all. It's mind over matter. You've got to physically tell your brain, your, up, your, your subconscious mind, I am going to do this. You can make me, you know, drag me back 10 steps, but you know something? I'm going to get up and I'm going to do this. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to continue doing what I enjoy doing, what I love to do. The charity events, keeping distracted, radios, um, doing other kind of events, you know, blogging, with uh, podcasting, etc. And your normal day-to-day -day duties in life. And, oh God, let me mention, I forgot to mention, i got a beautiful little kitten since Dawood passed away. Mashallah, mashallah. I know <laughs> and I have seen it. <laughs> and oh my god i just love it that you still have that passion and you're doing different things you're very active you're very passionate you have hobbies you have interests and i want everyone to pursue their hobbies and passion whatever they are interested in exactly you know and i've got to mention my kitten harshim he's called harshim <laughs> he's called harshim because he's brave courageous and strong okay and that's what the name harshim means so I got myself a kitten hash, and I'll tell you why. See, sometimes it's easy, but when you don't have that support mechanism sometimes, and you find it difficult to turn pe to people, I turned to an animal. And subhanAllah, I'm not joking. That little kitten is my baby. Nice I one. love him. He gives me so much comfort I have ever, ever experienced. And you know something? Back in years and years ago, when I used to be one of the managers at New Log, years and years ago at Meadow Hall, and um, I can remember an English lady calling up and saying, I'm so sorry, Faz, I can't come into work today. I says, oh, you're joking, we're short-staffed as it is. Why can't you come into work? My rabbit died. I says, you're joking. You're not coming to work because your rabbit's died, right? My goodness me, today at the age of 40, Oh, I've just told me you may my age. Oops. Uh, anyway, so today, today at the age of 40. You're still I, not young. It's only a number. Age is only a number, guys. So, you know, the love an animal can give a human being, subhanAllah, lies on another level. He is so loyal. He follows me all around the home. I used to care a lot, and I, I love caring for others, so caring and having a responsibility so what i've done is i've i've i had a responsibility of looking after my husband right one because i loved him two uh, it's your husband you're going to look after him right so and when they all passed away i've got a 19 year old son but it, i felt like he was independent like me anyway he didn't need me so i'm thinking where do i focus my you know responsibility i need a responsibility i need to look after something because i don't think i'll be able to have coped without my kitten so what i did i compensate and you spent about 20 minutes today dragging me in tesco's to find all that food for the <laughs> kitten today <laughs> <laughs> do you know something if anybody's listening halal food for kittens guys halal food for kittens but anyway <laughs> that's another subject can anyway, we talk so a little bit about the viewers as well about today the viewers if they want to get in touch with you or interact with you regarding this subject absolutely yeah guys they need to anybody that wants to talk about certain subjects you know please do call us on 0786 
786-5956. That's our text or WhatsApp number. Or you can call the studio hotline at 0114-2425200. And what show is it? You tell them. Radio Ramadan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just felt like doing that. No, you um, said it perfectly. Hang on, 87.87. Let's not forget where, where it's on. Yeah? That sounded quite good. Mm, right? Very okay. Impressive. And some and it's like what it is, sometimes we have to laugh. Laughing and smiling is sunnah. Hundred percent. You know, and sometimes you have to um you do have to smile and laugh at certain things. Because if you don't, you're not gonna get past what you're feeling. That's true. That's why people like to watch comedy movies or films or they like to do things that make them happy, even going out for a meal or going with their friends, having a banter and joke because it releases endorphin even when people go to the gym. So it's that happy, good feeling. Absolutely. And um, we are human beings. We react. When we're happy, we laugh. When we're sad, we cry. We go through emotions. But honestly, guys, if you have a problem with depression anxiety do something about it because you are not alone think you are a fighter think you are a warrior think you're special and you can do it exactly if we if we go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what allah says i will never burden a soul more than what it can carry so allah knows you can carry that burden allah knows you're going to be feeling rubbish after you've lost your mom after you've lost your dad after you've lost your your, your husband you know but there's other people around the world. They've got no they've got no food. Oh my god, there was a post ash actually that I saw the other day. An imam in Saudi Arabia, one of the um ladies stood up and she, or asked them a question. I think mm -hmm. it might have been on a TV program, I'm not hundred percent sure. But um a lady called from Somalia and she says, We don't have any food for Sahari time in the morning and we don't have any food for iftari. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to accept our fast? Subhanallah. She's asking a question. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to accept my fast? Because I don't have food to eat in the morning. And I don't have any food in the evening to even open my iftar with. Is Allah going to accept my fast? And the, the imam, he started, he started crying. Now look at the imam. She was so scared that Allah was not going to accept her fast because she had no food. And, so, and he started crying. We should be saying, we've got, and yet we've got food on the table. We've got food in the table to eat in the morning. We've got food on the table to eat in the evening. And we don't even ask them kind of questions. No, because we live, we, in, a, yeah. we live in a country, like in a civilized country, we've got everything. We have money, we have a house, we have roof, we've got warm clothes, we have everything. But just because sometimes we lose somebody, we or don't we even lose think a we're job, fasting. We kind of get lost and we let go of ourselves. So please be strong. We should be asking Allah, or we should be pleading please with be Allah, strong. forgive us. Have we done anything wrong within this pe period of the fast? Right? Ya Allah, we've made the effort. For you, because we love you, we worship you, and only you are worthy of worship. Okay? Making the right intention. That should be us saying, Ya Allah, please accept my fast. And one more thing I'd like to say, guys. If you've got a mom, if you've got your dad, if you've got your dad, 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 spend time with them. Love them. Be nice to them. Be kind to them. Respect them. Because they're your elders. And there's so much you could do for them. Because this Ramadan, we are blessed next ramadan they might not be here your mom might be here your dad might not be here you might not be here so love care let go of ego be more compassionate if you have problem with other people let go of it forgive people please forgive 100%. people and love love people absolutely oh, i'm so glad you said that that was so important i'm so glad you touched on that forgiveness this is a month of forgiveness to those who you commit because if allah can forgive who are we not to, as human beings not to forgive but there is we you know we hold grudges that's just our human nature right but the thing is allah loves those who can forgive each other so we we need to pray allah give us a set of eyes 
that can only going to see the good in people give us a heart that's only gonna you know give 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 out love islam means to love islam means to humble ourselves islam means to spread the word of love with love and harmony and and peaceful and nice comments and if you know but there's there's certain aspects of this you know and everybody has their own characters everybody has their own ways i've gone out of my way sometimes and maybe you have as well you want to really help and reach out people if you're like me we want to melt people's hearts this program is about touching hearts we're not doing this here for our grief we want to talk about our grief to say well guess what aisha Saj, Tariq, shaz everybody that's text these people you know your friends have also texted on, on your yeah um you know thank you for coming forward because you guys are not on your own we are here as well we have also suffered but we don't want to make this about us we want to make this about you so if this program is is helping anybody out there please get in touch please 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 whatsapp us on 0786 786 5956 and this, the topic again is mental health um on radio ramadan sheffield um ash um coming back to um so i want to talk more about suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. do you know what though what that person must be going through to even do such an act i'm glad you and picked drugs, up this dr and drugs and alcohol why do people turn to drugs and alcohol mm. going back to suicide i think a lot of people they think i haven't got what i wanted in life i haven't accomplished everything so they might want a certain person in their life they haven't got a certain job in their life or house or they're not exactly where they want to be so they think right i might as well just kill myself but well, that's not the answer you're not going to get everything that you want in life maybe allah's got a better plan for you but don't give hope and don't give up and say i'm going to end my life through that because there are people a lot worse than you if you have patience, a problem yeah patience. patience if you have a problem with drugs i'm not judging anyone so do something about it slowly slowly improve your life and be better because eventually what's going to happen is that drug is going to kill you because anything in moderation is good but when you take anything excessively yeah. it's going to be very, very harmful to you so please cut down and live a clean healthy a fit life and if you're not getting everything in life don't worry leave it to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's got a better plan and don't be upset because there are people a lot worse yes. than you exactly and when you think on that level ash that is the highest of iman thinking that other people are worse off and very very quickly just want to touch on a, on a point as well myself is worrying itself why are we worrying about things when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says i plan your rizq i give you your your breath your heartbeat it's me that puts that soul back into your body when you wake up in the morning this is why we say alhamdulillah and, and we, we praise allah when we wake up in the morning because your soul it, so sleeping is like death okay your soul does come out of your body when you're asleep and it returns back so you're saying alhamdulillah for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to bring that back to you okay when you wake up in the morning this is why we are grateful for the following day inshallah i will wake up tomorrow inshallah i will see you next week ash for part three on this show i may not be here right you just don't know but the thing is worrying about finances worrying about children worrying about how you're going to live and what you're going to do that is a killer in itself we need to learn to take a step back and say hang on a second i need to submit if i've submitted to islam and i'm a muslim what does muslim mean full submission full submission to who full submission to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his rasul yeah that is True. full submission don't accept him don't overthink don't worry about things that's not yours don't worry about something that's never meant to be yours don't overthink don't stress don't worry because people have bigger problems trust me fight your own battles and eventually time will heal eventually time will heal and i'm I honest to god i pray every single one of you that please don't do anything drastic anything bad anything horrible Absolutely. just be strong and we are We're in it here. together let's fight depression together Absolutely. and promise me let's fight depression together yeah as a unity as one as the as the ummah you know something i just keep bringing it back to islam again um subhanallah for our religion the nabi said 
if you hurt or cut your little finger, the whole body, yeah, all the cells in your body, the whole body will feel that pain because you've cut your finger, right? If you see a Muslim or a human being that is suffering, the whole ummah should feel the pain. But this is what we need. This is the disease. We need to change that in society. We need to be there for each other. We need to support one another. I don't care if they're a Muslim or a non-Muslim. Please, we need to go out and help people. We need to go out there. If people are starving, your, your neighbours, look what the teachings are of the beautiful Islam. Go out of your way to go and help and support somebody else. Okay? We must do this in the community. We must do this within the society. And Islam teaches us this. Why are we not doing it? Why have we not got time for one another? Why can we not take two minutes to sit down, even if somebody has got mental health issues? And if somebody is actually saying, Ash, you're suffering from depression, mate. So do you think? Do you think I am? But if you're going to react and pretend as though, I'm fine, me. I'm all right because I'm the macho man. Somebody's not going to approach you again. So take advantage if somebody is trying to help you instead of pushing them away, thinking, oh, we follow Islam and we're strong men and we're strong this. You are not. Clearly you are suffering. You are doing things out of the norm because this is not your character. So if, when you recognize and you've known somebody, for example, you've known me for a while. If I start to um, act in a very different manner, you should be, if you're my friend, you're going to pick up on them, on them vibes. Mm. Hang on a minute. Faz normally does this, Faz, that, that kind of thing. One so. more thing I've noticed when people are suffering from depression, mm -hmm. they can't eat. They oh, can't sleep. Big. They feel sick. They can't do a lot of things. And please eat, drink, sleep, because these things are going to really get you down and this is going to kill you more absolutely so it affects people in so many different ways yeah. and we need to talk about this yeah. please don't feel shy if you have a problem i urge you i beg you speak to people and get some therapy get some help speak about it and let's spread spread this awareness about depression yeah absolutely i mean when i suffered um the loss of my husband um yeah i, I insomnia i couldn't sleep at night I was waking up, but I was getting the urges to get up for tahajjud in the morning, to extra nuafil in the morning, thanking Allah, because I was thinking, I need to thank Allah, I need to thank Allah, because Allah's kept me away from that pain. Now, a lot of people are different. Some people can't, you know, um, sleep at night because they're worrying about their finances. They're worrying about the loss of the brother who's committed suicide. They're worrying about the, the, the spouses that, you know, for men, it's difficult too. But the thing is, you're worrying about work and, you know, that kind of thing. So when a certain person commits suicide, he doesn't know that he's affecting the people around him. Absolutely. So his wife, his brothers and sisters, yeah. you kill yourself. Okay. And your, you life. think you're, your life's ended. But what about all them people around you? What they're going through? But come on, because man. it affects everyone. And that's not an ans answer. It's, Sorry. It's not an answer. But we can't. It's not an answer. I should totally agree with you. It's, it's not. But sometimes I have to put myself in that person's shoes. It's not easy for somebody to go out there and, and jump off of a bridge. Okay, it's not easy for someone to take a, a full bottle. If they're not purposely doing it, the shaitan just takes over. And that person is lost all hope. You know, this is why I'm saying in society, we can't judge people who have committed suicide. Yes, Islamically, it's, it's incorrect. But at the same time, because of hum where's the humanity side of things gone? Okay, we can base things on what Islam says and what Islam says is correct. But at the same time, as the humanity side of things, what is that poor person feeling? What's driven them to that such aspect? Did they have people in their society to help them? Imams, some masjids, you know, I'm, I'm, forgive me for saying this. We, this is what I'm saying. When a janaza takes place, we read the namaz a janaza. We let people, the families go and everybody goes to the, to the graveyard. We bury the body. There's no counseling in place. People want to come back to the masjid. They want to eat. Right? But is there any discussions taking place? Are we coming back to the masjid to say, hang on a second. We do Friday khutbahs. But at the masjid, let's, the brothers are going to be coming back. When they come back and they've done a burial, 
right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't given the women the responsibility of burying somebody. Because he knows women are, are fragile, we're sensitive. We can't watch our loved ones getting buried. Why? Because we'd be saying, oh my God, I don't want my husband to be buried. Could you imagine me? I've known my husband 17 years as a colleague to the point where four years I was married. You know, could you, now I'm going to see them throwing muck on him, six foot under the ground. And one thing, Faz, maybe you've noticed it, this. At your hardest time, you've not found people to support you. But when you've thrown a party or let's go out for a meal, everyone joined you. You're having a laugh and a joke. But at your hardest time, only your close ones, the ones that really care, the ones that really love, they're the ones that are going to go out for you. you and they're going to help you. You know who's there for you in your time of darkness. Okay? And may Allah forgive us all. May Allah guide us. May Allah show us, have mercy on us. Guide us in the way of humanity, in the way of, in the way where, you know, we can be there for one another. Go back to your scriptures, go back to Islam, go back to the, you know, how did the companions sit together? How did they support each other? They didn't just support each other through, you know, deen. They were there for each other through thick and thin. They were brothers of deen. They were strong soldiers. They were your warriors. Women trouble, children, finances. Do you think these, these issues that we're having, do you think they never had them back then? Do you think they never suffered death back then? My goodness me, their imams were that strong. They chose their own graves. Right? We're going to dig our own grave today. Can you imagine doing that, Ash? Could you imagine me digging out my own grave next to my husband and saying, well, do you know what? That is where I want to be buried. I couldn't do that, could you? As I said before in another video, money, power, wealth, it doesn't matter. When your time is up, you're not going to take nothing with you. The only thing you're going to take is good character, good personality, good sense of humor, being nice to people. So please be nice to people, loving, caring. Don't respect pe disrespect people. If they've got a disability, if they've got something that you don't like about them, high to weight or the way they look, don't discriminate people because we're not perfect. No, nobody's perfect. This life is a gift, guys. We're going to have to wrap this up for tonight. Um, thank you so, so much. Very, very deep subject. Uh, mental health with your host, Faz uh, Tomlinson. Believe it or not, it's 11 o'clock nearly in the studio right now. Um, and we're recording this program for you guys. And um, we're hoping that you guys, um, you know, find it interesting. Can turn to us. You can ring up the studio. Ramadan, you know, Radio Ramadan itself. If you want to speak with me privately please contact um the studio uh, the text number and whatsapp number if you don't want to ring up is 0786786 and the studio hotline is 0114 um heart throbbing stuff guys um right ash i want to thank you again once again do you know what i love it we may have to get you on again mate thank you very much for your love and support it's been an absolute pleasure and honest to god I'm so happy you touched on this subject. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you some um, And guys, you're not alone. So let's fight depression together. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you for listening to Radio Ramadan 87.7. And stay tuned and we shall be back very soon in our next program. Um, guys, please leave your feedback. Um, to Brother Anwar in the in one of the directors in the in the um, studio, let us know what you're thinking and how we can better this program. I'd love feedback, and you should know this by um, Muslim values as well, um, so we can interact in other ways as well. If you want to participate in the show, we can always get you on, ring in our personal mobile numbers, and we can get you on. That's not a problem. Just give us uh, plenty of notice beforehand, or drop us a text person if you do know us. Um, take care, guys. Um, have a lovely Sahari, and um, all the best for the whole of Ramadan. Inshallah, if God wills, we shall see you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh once again. Yes, my G. Uh, uh. Yeah, guys, we've done it. Oh, I'm tired. You know we've what? We've nailed it. I we've done, done it. This yeah, all night yeah, long. yeah, yeah, and yeah. What did you turn around and say? An hour's loads, he says. An hour is more than enough time. Do you know something? You should be proud of yourself. Pat on the back to you. I know, Neela. Let's just say a few words for the camera. Do you know something, guys? How's it been today for you? Oof, it's deep, isn't it? It's deep. You know, mental health is massive. You can talk about, well, I can anyway. 
Um, if you haven't noticed, I can talk for England. You can, and that an makes hour, two. You know, I think we've gone even over our hour. I know. But what we I was going to say, this topic, honestly, I've got so many messages from so many people Same. to talk about it. Yeah. And I think we've done an amazing job. And guys, you're not so. alone. Honestly, if you're suffering from depression, mm -hmm. please, please get help, get therapy, whatever you need. But honest to God, absolute amazing. We need to do this again. And next, what we're going to talk about. Um, next, we'll talk about similar stuff. Um, you never know, we might get some feedback coming in. I'm hoping that people are going to ring up Radio Ramadan and say, we want live part participation yeah. because that is what i was hoping for but because i didn't make it on time mm -hmm. i had a schedule we didn't get that life um where people well before in my shows i've had live um correspondence from the viewers and the listeners out there but this time it's been a bit different but we're trying to make it as though it is kind of live mm -hmm. you know with, with, with reading the text messages out but hopefully if we you just were, if you were to give hearts. one message to the viewers viewers out there mm -hmm. one message to viewers out there suffering from depression what message would you like to give them just one message oh guys you have to be strong you have to find your inner peace you have to even if you're depressed or suffering from anxiety there's definitely help out there um you have to reach out to one another if you don't have that and you you feel like a macho man like you've kept it quite oppressed you've mm -hmm. kept it to yourself a little bit it's been hard it's been difficult, honestly. It's not been a walk we in the care. park. It's been hard. Bring us. We'll we'll be. We should open a a, a charity line. Yeah, and I'm gonna Call say, us. guys, love. You need to give love. Yeah, That's 100%. the most important thing you could do because it doesn't cost any money. Just be nice to people, yeah. Yeah. Just be pleasant to people. Even just give them a smile. Can just I just quickly that. give you an hadith? Yeah, sure. Right. So. Something that I read um, a few days ago was a gentleman came in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day, right? And um, he turned around and he said, and he must have been worshipping for about God knows how many years, 500 years it said in, the, in there, right? So this man, he read the Kalma, he read Salah, he did his um, Rosa, Zikah, Hajj, Umrah. He was in Ibadah 24-7, guys. And he came to his time of life where it came to an end and he came in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels take this man my servant take him to heaven okay um through my mercy take him to heaven through my mercy that's how the story went and he turned around and he says ya Allah he says take me to heaven through your mercy are you joking he says I prayed I prayed all my salah for you Allah I fasted I Paid my zikah. I worshipped you all the time for the past five hundred years, and you want to take me to heaven through my your mercy? No, I want to go to heaven through my good deeds. So Allah says, "You want to go to heaven through through your good deeds?" He says, "Yeah." He says, "So Allah subhanahu wa taala says to the angels, come, get the scales.' So they got the scales." And they weighed all the good deeds of that man on one side and they put Allah's mercy on the other side of the scale. And what do you think happened? Allah's mercy was overweighing all his good deeds that he did. Subhanallah. And he and, the, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the commanded the angels and said, Right now, take this take this person and take him to hellfire he says oh no ya Allah forgive me please 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 no take me to heaven through your mercy do you know what I mean mm. so we can pray five times a day we can give zikar we can work on charity we can do so so much the moral is this if we're not going to be nice and we're not going to be kind and we're not going to support other Muslim people or humanity animals we're not going to go where you think you're going to go so we can walk the walk, we can talk the talk, we can dress up in hijabis and jilbabis and we can have big, you know, imamas on and we can have big beards and we can go and pray on the salah. But if we're going to be horrible to each other, what is the point? See, this is, and don't forget, we're in the era, we're in the times where the Nabi Baba Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, I'm losing my voice now because it's 11 o'clock and I'm very, very thirsty. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I can talk for England. You can, um, yeah. There's going to be people that are going to walk like me, talk like me, sleep like me and do everything like me. But they're going to be so far away from me. You're not going to realize 
we need to focus look at people's actions actions mean louder they speak louder than words okay so we need to look at people and think hang on a second if this person is praying if this person is doing such good deeds how come the actions are not matching or how come he's just been horrible to their neighbor how come he's just kicked that dog if he's mm. a nice person how come if he's a nice person he's going to give you that your time if he's a nice person he understands islam they're going to give you their ears which is a gift but allah has gifted certain people with certain things this could be our next topic um and inshallah Dala, we can i'm taking over yeah i'm taking gonna, over gonna, his show i'm so sorry i'm gonna say honest <laughs> to god is so nice because you know when i've got faz here yeah she loves talking even though i like talking but i'm not able to speak today i've not even had the opportunity to take the talk because when i start talking i go on forever as well but it's been an absolute pleasure guys and much love ash vlogs